Hello everybody, I am Jay Shady, the voice of reason, and it's time to do some Q&A. Q&A number five coming at your way. Um, I said I'd do them every Wednesday. I have done them every Wednesday so far, so I'm going to pat myself on the back for that shit. Good stuff from me, as always. Um, this is going to be much shorter than my previous two Q&As because uh, I'm taking questions from eight subscribers at a time now this way. You don't have to listen to me talk for 30 minutes. That's way too much with me fucking talking. Makes my mouth water up and I need to drink a lot of fucking uh, Coke after that. And it makes me get fat. So it's just the whole bad fucking process. All right. So let's just get right into this motherfucker. First question comes from Manny Gentleman TV. He asks me three questions. What's your best championship in each company? WWE, WCW, TNA, and ECW. Well, uh, my best championships are the main ones. The top, you know, the main event belt. You know, the, 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 the gold standard, the diamond, you know, in the sand, um, the line in the sand, I think it is, not the diamond in the sand, it doesn't make any fucking sense. Um, but yeah, you know, the WWF championship, or WWE championship, uh, you know, the big gold belt, all the main belts for the company, um, that's the Super Bowl ring, that's the World Series trophy, that's the Stanley Cup, you know. If you talk about belt designs, you know, the, there's the Winged Eagle. I love that fucking belt, the one that Hogan had and that uh, lasted until Austin beat Michaels at Mania 14. Um, he, also, the Intercontinental Championship when I was a kid and I, you know, thought I was going to be a wrestler for two seconds. Uh, I wanted to be an Intercontinental Champion. That was my dream, not even going for the big belt. But I always wanted to be an Intercontinental Champion. Um... The uh, big gold belt from WCW is classic. The Hardcore Championship. Um, the ECW Heavyweight Championship. The old school one. Um, TNA, I don't I don't know how the belts look. I don't watch TNA, so I can't answer. But yeah, that, I hope that answers the question right. And then Manny Gentleman also asks, Where would you see wrestling going in the next 10 years? Hopefully up, man. You know, it's it's it can't... I mean, I ask myself every single week, can it possibly get lower... And it seems like it does somehow, some way. It gets lower and lower and lower. But you know, I'm not. I mean, no disrespect by this or any like harm or like. I'm not trying to say anything shocking. But let's face facts. Vince McMahon is very old right now. I mean, he's mid 60s, late 60s. Let's say he does die in the next 10 years. Like I said, I mean no disrespect or evil intentions. I'm just talking about life here. Let's say he dies within the next 10 years. You know. Triple H will take over right from there. And I just think that, and you know, I understand people have problems with Triple H and deservedly so. You know, the way he politics, you know, the way he plays favoritism and he's very biased. But at least Triple H is a wrestler. He understands the locker room. He understands the guys in the locker room and the mentality and the wrestling business where Vince McMahon can't because first and foremost, he's a promoter, not a wrestler. So at least we'd probably get some more respectable wrestling from Triple H at least what I believe and for me any change at this point is good change because something just needs to change it's just so stale so I hope that Triple H takes over within the next 10 years because I think the McMahon fucking era needs to end badly and I hope it doesn't have to be McMahon's death I hope he could just fucking say you know what I'm too old for this shit I'll give it up now um if he holds on for the next 10 years and runs it it's just gonna go fucking down even more and you know the thing is i'm not trying to say that you know wwe is the only wrestling promotion but i think that when wwe exceeds everything exceeds everything becomes good the whole business itself becomes good because wwe is the gold standard you know it's where everybody wants to end up it's what everybody looks at when they think about wrestling so it all falls on the shoulders of wwe Last but not least, Manny Gentleman asks, where do you see TNA going in t in 10 years? Going in 10 years. Um, I hope up, you know? I don't watch TNA, so I cannot answer, like, for future, I can't answer uh, TNA questions because I don't watch the show. I mean, I could try to answer them, but it's not going to be a smart answer. But I hope TNA goes up for, you know, the sake of competition to fucking put some fuel up fucking WWE's ass, light a fire, and make them fucking try to do something good because WWE is not motivated they feel no um they feel no need they feel no motivation no dedication no inspiration to try to do something good because they have no competition 
And WWE desperately needs some competition right now, so I hope it goes up. But I don't know what to say about them changing the show itself because I don't watch the show. Thank you for the questions. Next is a question I got from two different people, but they're the same type of question, so I'm going to count them as one. Omega Magic West asked, If you were to stop watching Raw, would you watch other feds like TNA, ROH, or would you just stop watching, period? And at the same time, pretty much the same type of question comes from uh, my uh, my number one fan, the guy who breaks my balls with every fucking video I put out if I could find it. Ecstasy69, he asks me, why don't you watch and review TNA and ROH? I'm glad I'm going to answer this once and for all, you know, so people could stop telling me to, you know, give up WWE, start watching TNA and start watching other feds. I'm going to say this right now. Let's end this discussion. If I stop watching WWE, I'm going to stop watching wrestling as a whole. For me, if it ends, you know, once WWE, my viewership ends with WWE, that's it for wrestling. Because I just do not have that passion for the wrestling business like that. Now, I, I know I'm probably going to piss a lot of people off because, you know, people live and die by wrestling. You know, and if that's what you want for your career, for what you want in the future of your life, you want to be involved in the wrestling business, that's fine. But there's so many people on here. Um, you know, I'm not talking about pe any specific people, just some people in general that take this shit so seriously who have no, you know, desire to do anything about wrestling, but they take wrestling so seriously. Like, it's this thing that, you know, it ha you have to, like, base your whole life around it as a fan, and that's not what I do. I watch it as, like, a TV show, you know? And I'm not trying to, you know, sound like I'm, I'm a dumbass fucking fan. Look, when I made this channel, it was with the intention of talking from a dedicated, passionate fan perspective, not a Mark perspective, you know? Not somebody that lives, breathes, and dies wrestling because I have no desire to do anything with wrestling in the future of my life. I watch it as a TV show. You know, it's like me watching The Walking Dead. The Walking Dead is a zombie show. If The Walking Dead starts sucking and I stop watching The Walking Dead, I'm not going to say, you know what, I need my fix to watch another zombie show. I'm just going to give up the show itself because that's what I care about, not the zombie genre itself. Now, I do love wrestling, but not to the point where I need my fix of it from fucking Japanese promotion, all these underground promotions and shit. Look, I fell in love with WWF and I fell in love with WCW. WCW no longer exists. So all I have right now is WWE. So that's it for me. I just don't have the time to dedicate my life to these other companies to make room for the absence of WWF. Why I started watching wrestling in the first place was for entertainment. Now I think the word entertainment gets thrown around these days like it's a bad fucking thing. But it's not. I mean wrestling is supposed to be entertaining. Why shouldn't it be entertaining? Entertaining. The thing is, the problem is that it's not entertaining. WWE has entertainment in their name, but they don't provide entertainment. You know, WWF was always booked around entertainment. Just look at the characters from the old days like Macho Man, Hulk Hogan, you know. These were people who provided entertainment. And then why I fell in love with it, my fucking voice is dying, I don't know why. Why I fell in love with it for, was for people like Stone Cold being the shit out of their balls for the backstage shit, for the brawls. For, you know, DX doing crazy shit, NWO doing crazy shit, them driving cars all around the arena, you know? That's the shit I fell in love with because it was like great story writing. And, you know, the matches were just the payoff. But, you know, it's not like I need to watch. I have no interest in watching two people fight in a ring if I'm not invested in the story and the entertainment aspect. You know, so I'm, I hope I don't piss a lot of people off. I'm sure I will by saying... Well, you're not a real wrestling fan because you don't care about wrestling in general, you know? You just care about all this little, all the storylines and shit. You should appreciate two guys fighting in the ring in tights. You know, if that's what you're into, that's fine. But that's not what I watch wrestling for. I watch wrestling for the entertaining fucking shit. And I don't get any of it. So, there you go. That's a long answer. But this, this I was going to make a whole video on this topic. But I figured just get it over with, with this Q&A. So that is why I'm not going to watch TNA, I'm not going to watch ROH, because wrestling doesn't have that place in my life as it does to some other people. What has the place in my life is the shit that WWF used to do. All that stuff. So there you go, I hope I didn't piss everybody off too much with that fucking answer. 
Thanks for the question. Next, Clarson440 asks, two questions. I know WWE wants to appeal to little kids, but why can't WWE keep all the childish stuff on Saturday Morning Slam and make Raw and SmackDown more edgy and cool for real wrestling fans? You know, that's the way it should be. But it's not that way, you know, I mean, that's the way it was in the old days. They used to have those WWF shows like 10 in the morning on Saturdays or Sundays for the kids. And then they used to do their main fucking shit on Raw. But, you know, WWE only cares about kids these days. They only care about moms and appealing to mainstream and looking squeaky clean and getting Linda into the Senate seat or the Congress or whatever. So that's all they care about. They don't care about... You know, adult fans, people who want to be entertained with more mature and more uh, better quality product. So, that's the answer. And uh, Clarkson also asked me a second question. Is WWE ever going to fire those Hollywood script writers? I don't even think they are actually Hollywood script writers. I really don't. I mean, if they were Hollywood script writers, shouldn't they be writing some better fucking stories, you know? I mean, if you're working in Hollywood, you usually have to have a really good story in order to get a movie made. Um, I know that doesn't apply to everything, but still, I mean, if you're going to hire a bunch of Hollywood script writers, one of these guys should be able to tell a good story, but, you know, we don't get any good stories. And these are probably just fucking people who took, like, one college course and, you know screenwriting for dummies 101 and right uh, right on the spot they're hired for wwe so you know wwe isn't gonna fire these people until they you know want to change their direction wwe is very satisfied with where they're at right now so they feel no need to fire these people unfortunately next this is um a question it's like a two-part question from two different subscribers asking me about the invasion storyline itself so first I'll answer the question from Easy Dose 420 He asks, I've heard that you hated the invasion angle, but I don't think I've ever heard your reason. So the question is, what was it that you hated about the invasion storyline? It's pretty simple. You had WCW and ECW. Now, especially WCW, you had a company that gave WWF a run for their money. And yet ECW, a company that inspired a lot of the ideas which created the Attitude Era. And the way that these companies were represented in the Invasion storyline was a slap in the face to the fans of the fucking federations when they existed as their own thing rather than a WWE, you know, um, ruled thing. The Invasion storyline, the Alliance. I mean, it was horrible. I mean, I don't know how people could say that they actually like this storyline unless they're like super fucking nostalgic for shit. But this fucking sucked. I mean, just look at the way the alliance was booked, you know? I, you know, it should have just, it should have been like WWE versus ECW versus WCW. You should have had, I don't think there should have been an alliance, you know? It should have been the three companies fighting, first of all, I think. Um, but I'll get into that, that shit with uh, my next question, which has to do with the booking of it. But let me talk about what I hated about the Invasion storyline. You had um, the Alliance, and look at who was the leader of the Alliance. The leader of WCW and ECW was Stone Cold Steve Austin, a WWF guy. Stone Cold isn't known for being in WCW. He's not that known for being in ECW. He's known for, first and foremost, being a WWF guy. And he's the leader of the Alliance. That's saying that the Alliance sucks so much that they need Stone Cold in order to even have a fighter's chance to compete with WWF. That's like having, you know, the Chicago Bulls with Michael Jordan, Pippen, and Rodman. And they're going up against some street team that fucking sucks. And the, the Bulls feel pity, so they're like, you know what? We'll give you Jordan in order to try to even out the odds a little more. We're going to take pity on you. That's how it looked. WWF just offered one of their top guys in order to make the alliance look more credible. Credible, And look at the second in command to Austin was Kurt fucking Angle. I mean, two WWF guys were the leaders of the Alliance. I mean, how fucking ridiculous is that shit? I mean, after that, it's a bunch of fucking mid-carters and, like, jobbers and who's who. Like, Sean fucking Stasiak. You know, that's the fucking star power you could get from WCW. Fucking Canyon. You know, that's the sh best shit you could come up with. You needed Hall. You needed Nash. You needed Hogan. Sting. Uh, Macho Man. Goldberg. Ric Flair, Bischoff, I mean the list goes on and on and on 
of key people in WCW, you know, and uh, Sabu, Sandman, key people in ECW who didn't take part in this storyline. So how is anybody ever supposed to believe that the Alliance had a fighting chance over WWF? They never did. Slap in the face to the fans. I mean, this could have been one of the greatest fucking storylines of all time. But instead, we get presented with WWF versus a bunch of mid-carders and jobbers from WCW and ECW rather than, the, rather than the actual fucking main eventers of WCW and ECW. Um, and then the second part to that question comes from... T-N-A-N-J-D Panthers. He asks, how would you have booked the invasion storyline? I would have booked it with, I would, like I said, we've had ECW and uh, WCW be their own things. I would have had like a triple type thing. I would have had Paul Heyman be the leader of ECW and like Ric Flair and Eric Bischoff being the co-leaders of WCW. I would have had this be a like one year, like at least one year storyline. I would have had it culminate at, um, at WrestleMania. I would have the final match be at WrestleMania for what company wins, what company, you know, surpasses and ends the other companies. Um, I mean, this angle lasted what? Would it start in like June, July and last till Survivor Series? Was that three fucking, three, four months? Are you kidding me? This storyline easily could have been a year at least. It could have lasted a year with... You know, WCW getting their own shows. You could have had SmackDown turn into Nitro. You could have had ECW shows. I mean, you know, for Vince McMahon, a guy who likes to make as much profit and exposure as possible, what was wrong with him? I mean, seriously, you could have had Nitro. Like I said, you could have had Nitro, you know, to rival with uh, Raw. I know you wouldn't put it on the same time, of course, but you could have had Nitro, you know, like I said, taking over the SmackDown time slot. Um, but I would have had this with NWO coming in, NWO fighting with DX, you know, have Goldberg versus, um, Goldberg versus Austin, Sting versus Undertaker, all these actual dream matches, not fucking Chris Jericho versus Canyon, who gives a shit about that, you know? Um, I would have had this, you know, have it actually look like WCW or ECW was actually winning, have, you know, for a certain point in time, have WCW be in control of the other companies, have them leading, and then have it all, you know, all culminate at WrestleMania 18 or something. Have it all end at WrestleMania 18 with an elimination match or some shit. Whoever loses, I mean, whoever wins, you know, whatever whatever uh, company wins, you know, has full control and is the winner, and all the, uh, the, the two other companies have to... Uh, die off or whatever um i'm not i can't get words right now it's very fucking late the other two companies have to die off and end um and i've had it end with hogan fighting for uh wcw and imagine how great this would have been hogan you know as hollywood hogan wcw he turns his back on wcw and wins it for wwf and right there he embraces hulkamania again oh man what a wrestlemania moment that would have been yeah, it was great seeing him versus The Rock, but imagine him embracing Hulkamania by saving the company that made, made him famous in the first place, WWF. That would have been fucking fantastic. A great way to bring Hulkamania back, but Vince McMahon totally botched this shit. You know, you could have had so many great fucking angles and booking decisions with this, that, and none of them were done in a good way. Thanks for the question. All right. Next, we get a question from Mitochondria. He asks... Number one, what job are you planning to do in the future, and are you worried? Um, I'm planning to, I want to be an actor in film. Um, that's what I'm studying right now. I love movies. That's my passion right there. Am I worried? No. I mean, I'm a guy that just takes it one day at a time. You know, Indiana Jones said I never plan that far ahead, and I kind of apply that uh, slogan to myself. You know, I don't like to plan that far ahead in advance, you know. I take it one day at a time. I mean, you know, it's like... I'm very fucking morbid and shit, my viewpoints, I'm very pessimistic. You know, you just think about it, you know, like, man, our, our lives, you know, one life is like a fucking little speck on the whole fucking spectrum of, you know, the world existence, like, we're a little fucking dot when it pertains to the whole existence of the world and humans and earth, so it's like, I don't know, I had this viewpoint that life is like fucking meaningless and shit, 
you know, I don't want to get into a man is meaningless rant right now, even though that's what I believe, but that's another talk for another fucking time, but, you know, am I worried? It's like, whatever fucking happens, happens at this point, you know, we can't really, life is just like, a, it's a, like a fucking board game, it's full of fucking chance, and, you know, once you reach the end of the board game, it just starts without you with a bunch of new players, and it's like you never even fucking existed. All right, now I sound really fucking morbid, but yeah, okay, I'll finish right there. Um, next, if you and John Diva was in an extreme rules match, what finisher would you do to him? Good question. I would probably do some like guillotine, guillotine type finisher. Um, not guillotine. I think there's like a wrestling move that has guillotine in it, but I mean an actual fucking guillotine. I have him put his fucking head and his arms in the fucking metal shit, the little like metal uh, fucking card shit, and have a fucking saw, a hacksaw, or some shit. Chop his fucking PG fucking goofball head off. You know, that's it. No more John Cena. No more hiding behind kids. Have all the kids fucking cry right there. They just see John Cena's head fucking decapitated. I fucking stand it up. Fucking kick a field goal with his head. Kick it right up the fucking roof. Yeah, there you go. That's my finisher to John Cena. End this motherfucker once and for all. Even though he'd probably still kick out after that. Alright, next. When it, uh, from mitochondria, his last question. When are you going to do the Diary of Jane cover? Um, you know, I'm trying to do a lot more covers. I've been slacking off with the guitar videos, but I am going to get back into it. I'm, I'm going to be more consistent about it. I actually recorded uh, a cover earlier in the day today that I'm going to upload later in the week. I think you guys will like it a lot. But I have a lot of songs that I want to cover. So I will do Diary of Jane, but it's going to be a little bit down the road because I have uh, other songs I want to cover first. So don't worry, it'll happen. Thanks for the question. Uh, CJM Hockey 19 asks, what are some of your favorite shows on TV right now? I have uh, Breaking Bad, which is uh, the greatest fucking show on TV, hands down. Breaking Bad, I love that shit. Uh, Mad Men, uh, Mad Men season is on right now. That's, you know, filling up my Sundays every, uh, every week right now. Great season of Mad Men. Um, Walking Dead, of course. I do my Walking Dead videos. I love that show. I'm also watching Bates Motel. It's, uh, the, you know, obviously a show based on uh, Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho. I'm a huge Alfred Hitchcock fan. You know, it's like, it's like a love-hate show. Like, I, the show has a lot of good qualities and a lot of elements I do like. But there's also a lot of bad stuff and stuff that makes me cringe. But, you know, whatever. It, it's tolerable. I like it for what it is. And I think right now it is getting a little better. Um, and also Hannibal. Um, I actually, the pilot episode of Hannibal, I fucking loved it. I thought this was going to be the greatest show on TV, you know, like right under Breaking Bad. That pilot was fucking fantastic, but, um, it hasn't lived up to the quality of the pilot with the pet, the, the, uh, episodes after that. It kind of has become formulaic in a way, whereas the pilot felt like I was watching something different and I felt like I was watching like a Stanley Kubrick movie or something, but it's still good. Um, and I'm still sticking around with it. So those are my five shows I'm watching right now. I'm going to try to get into some more shows, though, because, you know, Raw sucks. So I have to fill up my time with other things. Thanks for the question. Um, I think I'll answer, like, two more questions. I think that will reach my eight limit, eight subscriber limit. Here we go. Hawk5934 WWF asks, what do you think of Lex Luger? I made a video on this, um, not a video on this, but I talked about this a little bit in my WrestleMania 10 retro review. I talked about Lex Luger in a little mini rant, but I fucking hate Lex Luger, you know? This guy's a fucking dipshit. He's a goofball. He's just a piece of shit, you know? I, I, I remember being a kid. He was shoved down my fucking throat, shoved up my ass. McMahon lost Hogan, so he was trying to book Lex Luger as the new Hulk Hogan, giving him an American, all-American gimmick, you know, the Lex Express, the total package, all this shit. You know, and nobody ever bought it. I mean, you don't meet anybody who is a fucking Lex Luger fan, or at least know a die-hard Lex Luger fan. It just did not catch on. He tried to, they tried to book him as Hogan, but he didn't have the charisma of Hogan. He didn't have the popularity. He just didn't have that connection to the audience. And he, he can't cut promos. He can't fucking wrestle. All he ever was was a fucking physique, and that's it. And you know... The fact that, and I, and I talked about this, the fact that he was with Miss Elizabeth, Miss Elizabeth was his girlfriend, they were living together, and he got her into drugs, I believe, and 
you know, I think it led to her overdose. She overdosed in his house and she died right in his house, probably because of him. He got her hooked into drugs. And there's also a lot of domestic disputes, a lot of him beating the shit out of her and calling the cops on her, calling the cops on him because she was getting her fucking face beat to death by him. So fuck this motherfucker. You know, I love Miss Elizabeth. And, you know, he probably led to the demise of Miss Elizabeth. So for that, fuck this motherfucker. I hope that was enough fucks in there for you. <clears throat> Next uh, question from Hawk is, do you think Al Pacino is in the top five of the best actors of all time? Hands down. I'm talking about classic Pacino, not Pacino in this day and age. I mean, it's just sad what Pacino and De Niro have come to. Just like what they've come out to be this day. It's just a, such a shell of their former selves, you know? I mean, these once great actors, these artists, just doing these half-ass phoned-in performances every six months in these lame-ass movies with these lame-ass roles, you know? I haven't watched a Pacino and De Niro movie since, like, fucking, I mean, a new one in so long. Like, the last Pacino movie I've seen was, like, Any Given Sunday or some shit. The last De Niro movie I saw was, like, Meet the Parents. Um, but they're in these fucking horrible fucking movies, and you could just look at their face, especially De Niro. Like, he just looks so miserable. Like, he just does not want to do this shit anymore. Um, you know, Pacino was in, like, the two Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck movies. The fucking, um, the Adam Sandler movie where Adam Sandler was playing his sister. I mean, the fuck? The guy who did Scarface, you know? But when you talk about classic Pacino, Pacino was in my top three of all time, you know? Um, I mean, just look at the roles that Pacino had. I mean, The Godfather... Arguably the greatest movie of all time, Scarface, another fucking one of the greatest movies of all time. Dog Day Afternoon, a fantastic fucking role. Uh, Serpico, um, Heat, uh, Carlito's Way, uh, fucking And Justice for All. Just so many great movies Al Pacino has done before he started doing a bunch of shitty movies. Um, yeah, he's fucking fantastic, you know. One of my favorites as a child, you know, I... A huge inspiration, somebody I look up to and somebody, you know, that drives me and motivates me to do, you know, acting when I do acting, you know, I always, you know, just a very inspirational figure to motivate me when I do acting. So yeah, Pacino is fucking fantastic when he uh, actually cared about what he was doing. And last, I answer one more question, it comes from the Wrestling Crisis. Last question. What was your favorite Star Wars film? Mine is episode 3 because Anakin joined the dark side. Favorite Star Wars film, hands down, episode 5, Empire Strikes Back. Does not get better than the Empire Strikes Back. I mean, Luke gets his hand cut off, finds out Vader's his father, Han gets frozen, taken away by Boba Fett. It ends on such a down note. And that's what life is, a series of down endings. All Jedi had was a bunch of Muppets. If you can quote a movie I just quoted from right there, I will give you a shout out in one of my next videos. Okay, so there you go, episode 5, greatest fucking Star Wars movie of all time. Um, hope you like this video. I'm very tired. I, I, you know, I'm, I don't think I'm very happy with the product of this video because I sound like a retard. I really need to start doing these videos in like the fucking like 8 p.m. type of time period. This way I could sound more intelligent rather than what time is it? 3 0 fucking 7 in the morning. I have school in the morning. Oh my god. All right, so there you go. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoy it more than I enjoy it right now. Um, I am Jay Shady, the voice of reason. As always, leave comments in the description box for um, future Q&A questions. I think I have my set of questions already for my next Q&A video, but I might not. So ask questions and eventually I will get to them. I'm glad that at this point I could actually, I, I actually have the limit of questions and I'm actually exceeding um I, I mean, the, the, yeah, I'm just gonna fucking end it right there. Jay Shitty, voice of reason, like, comment, subscribe, I'll see you later.